Hello everybody, this is Shannon Huffman. I am the head scorekeeper for BC Comics and Games, and I'm here for the long-awaited Scorekeeping 101. In true 101 fashion, we're going to start with the basics, our friend Wizards Event Reporter. When you log in, this is the screen that you're looking at. Um, we need to go to Run Events, and I'm just going to pick an event here. You hit open on whatever event you're doing. And you'll get this happy screen. You want to go to your players tab to register your players. The best way to do it is to have everybody when they sign up use um, their DCI number on their sign up pages. It goes a lot faster than trying to use the local players tab, which you can do and look people up by name. But if you have anybody who isn't in here, then you have to look them up anyway. And it's simply just faster to go with the DCI number. So I've got a couple people here from an event we ran a few weeks ago. So we'll just use a couple of those so you can see how it works. Type the number in, hit enter. Check the name to make sure it matches your sign up sheet. And then you hit enroll. And there you go. We're going to just throw some eight random people in here. And just for those of you that are wondering, this will not be an actual event, so we're not going to like report an event that hasn't been run, in case anyone's worried out there. You need eight people to fire an event, minimum. But Wizards Event Reporter, which we fondly call Weir, can handle very many much more. I think the biggest event I've run was 362 in... Wizards Event Reporter did just fine with it. Oops. Now, if you get somebody that you can't read their DCI number, you can go to this Find Player tab right here. You have to be connected to the internet for this to work and you put in their uh, last name and then their first name, hit enter, and it'll bring you up a list of possible. In this case, we only have one person we need to worry about. Make sure the region is makes sense for the people that are in your event. Hit OK and enroll. Once you have your eight players minimum, you hit enrollment complete. That's just because I'm using a feature. At eight players, you'll have three rounds. Just hit OK. Every, no matter how many people you put in, that will come up with a different set of rounds. Now here is where you can adjust things if you need to. Like if your table's start number needs to be 27, this is where you would change it. We're going to stay with one. And then you're going to start at the beginning of the round. If you want to do a seating. Um, with eight people, you don't generally need to do this, but for example purposes. You want to create name seating and I'll put them in alphabetical order and then you'll print this off. Go to seatings and print seats by name. Once they're seated your head judge will um, do their announcements and all of that good stuff and while they're doing that you can get your round going. Um, so you go back to matches, hit create matches, it'll set them all up for you. And then you want to go to the magic tab called multi-print. It's my favorite place to be. And here, spread out a little bit, you want to talk to your head judge on how many copies they want. Um, for an eight person event, it's usually one. But considering most events are more than that, you usually are going to do two. So we do print pairings by name. You put it in there twice. For me, I do print pairings by table and I keep that one and that's what I will wrap all of my slips in at the end of each round. Um, and then you're going to go down here to result entry slips cut machine. You'll hit print and it will print all of these in succession. And instead of having to hit print a bunch of individual times. Um, once that's done, judges will post it, slips will get cut and handed out. And then you just enter results. 
So if the slip comes in and we'll say Chris 1 over James 2 0, you just hit 2 0. Or 0 2, or 2 1, or 1 2. And then you'll get this at the end of the round and you just hit OK. You can see standings and you have a standings tab now. Then you go back to rounds, create next round. And we go create matches and do the same thing again. Now with larger events, you have a penalties tab. Now to do penalties, the first thing you need to do is have judges. So I'm just going to use a friend of mine here, because I know his by heart, as my head judge. Go to the more judges tabs and you can add more people. You just put their DCI number in here. Their name will come up, you hit add. If you don't know their DCI number, you can do the find tab like we did with players. When you have all of your judges in, you hit done. Now you can do penalties. So you just hit new, pick your player, Pick your judge. We only have one on this event, so uh, my good friend Art will do this penalty. When you go to this drop down box here, and it has all the different penalties. The judge will have written on the entry slip that they will hand back to you what the penalty is. It's usually on the bat. It'll have the judge's name, it'll have the player's name, last, then first. Then it will have the violation, which will say looking at extra cards. And then it'll have a default penalty for it. Sometimes this is upgraded or downgraded, depending on the situation. That will be written on the slip as well. As a standard looking at extra cards, it's a warning. And it'll have an explanation of why they got the penalty. Let's say, um, flipped extra card when drawing opening hand. You want these explanations to be short and simple, if at all possible. And you hit save. And it'll say penalty saved. And then you just hit cancel and it'll take you back to your tabs. And you can go back to your round and finish your round out. At the end of the event, when everything has been done, uh, let's see. Um, if you have more than eight people, there'll be a cut to top eight. And then once you get through them all, there'll be a tab up here that will say start playoffs. Um, See if it'll come up on this one. Okay. All right, so you hit start playoff. And it'll tell you where to cut it off. We could do like a top four on an eight, but usually it'll just be a top eight and you leave it at eight and leave it at standing. Just hit okay. And I'll create matches. And then top eight is not time. So this is where you can do things like type up deck lists or make sure your slips are in order and all of that good stuff. I'll do another video on organization of a tournament. Um, and then once this round is over, this is single limb. So when you do next round, you'll have half the people. And then we put those in and then this will be your final. And then You'll do that. And then it'll say that all rounds have been done. You go to event and you hit end event. Then this will come up. You just say okay. And then it'll say, Do you want to upload this event? And you want to, today we're going to say no. Usually you'll say yes and it'll upload it and you'll see here that it's been uploaded. Um, at this point, you're going to want to save it. We have a, this, you hit save, you can export it as um, the Weir file. Hit save results as an XML file. Um, I do both and I have it saved to a Dropbox here that is shared with all the people in our administration. So if there are problems later, you can upload it into Weir, find the problem, fix it, what you need to do. And those are the basics of Weir. Thanks for joining me and I'll be sending you another video later that shows how to organize slips and whatnot. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you.